You want to know why people don't like Terminal? Because it looks like poo out of the gate. It just looks archaic. And we're going to fix that in this video. We're going to make it look beautiful. Just completely awesome. So we're going to do this in Linux, Windows, and Mac. Uh, obviously on the Windows portion, we're going to be using Windows Terminal with Linux. So it's pretty much Linux just in Windows. But needless to say, let's get on the desktop and start customizing our terminal. All right, so to start out with, we'll launch into Terminal. Now, as you see, I have a pretty elegant, minimal terminal here. Uh, obviously, out of the gate, you're not gonna have this. You're gonna be running something called Bash. It'll be something something along those lines right there, as far as the prompt goes. It might be a little uglier than this, but let's fix that. Whatever your terminal is, I like to hide all the title bars, any extra fluff and stuff before the prompt, obviously, I like to get rid of. But we're going to get rid of Bash altogether and move to ZSH. And if you want to see a more in-depth video on how to do this, I'll put a link above because I've actually shown people how to install ZSH in the past. We're going to just do the quick and dirty method today. So first off in here, we're going to actually need to install some different things. So in your terminal preferences, hide your title bar, um, change your system font. I like to use the Meslo LGS NF, which stands for nerd font. This is the absolute best font, and we're going to be using this font type specifically for the Power Level 10K tool set. So with that, uh, let's go over to the how-to guide and show you what we're doing. So on the website, christitus.com forward slash ZSH, you'll see this is all we need to do. And I've made little kind of basically cheat sheets here. And in this sheet, you'll see I have a little initial setup. We'll just click that come back over to here and you just type that in and that's it it pretty much just goes ahead does everything i've already actually cloned power level to zsh but it basically gets all this ready what this doesn't have is the zsh packages so if you're on debian based make sure you do an apt install zsh and all the dependencies that are back over here which would be zsh ZSH syntax highlighting, auto jump, and auto suggestions. But with these things in, we're ready to move on. And if we go to this website, uh, the GitHub for Power Level 10K, um, you can actually scroll all the way down and you'll find something called fonts. And if you look in the little getting started guide here, let's go manual. You can see we've already done that. That was actually part of the initial setup script. And then towards the bottom, when you're gonna get to the fonts section, there's only really a couple things. Just click all four of these, download them, install them. And then when you pop over here and you get into your terminal properties, you should see that actually pop up and you just want the Meslo LGS NF regular. Otherwise, you're not going to get all the cool little icons. So it's really important whether you're doing this on Windows, Mac or Linux. This is the basic setup. Uh, so once all that's done, we're pretty much ready to switch over to ZSH. So the easy way to do that is C-H-S-H-H. -H -H. That's hard to say. C-H-S-H. -H. Man, tongue twister. <laughs> Space. And then your user. You can easily do dollar sign user. It'll auto fill in Titus. That's my user. And you just type your password in and it'll say, hey, what do you want your new shell to be? You want bin ZSH. Now make sure you actually installed ZSH. Otherwise, this isn't going to be good. Uh, but anyways, uh, I, since I already am on ZSH, it just is like, hey, no, you don't need it. So then you can exit, quit out, and then come back in. On initial prompt, you're going to get the, the actual configuration auto launch. However, if you exit out or mess it up, don't worry. You're going to run this several times just because I'm constantly changing my shell. But this little command, P10K configure, allows me to do just that. So I'll do this. And then it asks you a set of questions and we'll go, yes, yes, I see a lock. Yes, I see the Debian symbol. Yes, I see all the icons. Remember, if these are messed up, you didn't change your font. Make sure you install that font and change it in your terminal. First, before running this, change that font. And if you can see a question like, hey, this didn't work. None of the fonts showed up. You didn't install the font. Follow instructions. 
I only say that because I totally did that so many times. I was like, where are the actual icons? And uh, it just took me a while to figure out, hey, it's the fun. So don't feel bad if you do do that. All right, so we're going to choose rainbow. Um, and then we just get to choose what we want. ASCII's a little bit more old school. I like Unicode for a little bit more newer school. Uh, you can put a clock on here or not. A bit redundant since I have it in the top corner, so we're not going to do it. Uh, you choose what type of bracket you want. I kind of like the slanted. Uh, that looks really cool. You can do the blurred, not blurred. Uh, we're going to continue with the slanted and just be a little more uniformed across the board. So I'm going to go slanted on everything. And then you can choose one line or two lines. And notice each one of these options, I will say you're going to get a whole host. Like when you combine these options and start changing things around, the prompts are going to look vastly different. So there's a lot of different combinations to make your prompt look very, very different. And a lot of people are like, whoa, you're always changing your prompt. And I'm like, not really. I'm just rerunning this tool. So we're going to go two lines. And we'll go with uh, the disconnected. I don't really like the connected. I kind of fell off that wagon. As far as the prompt frame, um, you know, I'm not a big, I've kind of gotten over the whole prompt frame. So we're going to get rid of that. Uh, we're going to go compact. I like to see tons of icons and I like it to be a bit more concise. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I like to hit no for this because I like to see different things between my commands. So if I'm running a command and I'm scrolling through 5,000 lines, I like to see all that. Instant prompt mode, you're generally always going to hit number three for this one. And then we'll hit yes to overwrite. And as you see, we now have a new prompt. So when we launch into our prompts, we go into like website, clear that. You'll see it's kind of cool. So the neat thing about ZSH and this new prompt, it actually follows your Git project. So if I make or let's say I touch a new file, we'll call it one, you'll notice, hey, there's an untracked file in this GitHub repository. Did you need to commit that? And you can do git status and look at it and go, oh, there's a file. Well, we're not gonna need that, so let's just remove it and clear out. But this is this basic setup, rerun this, do all that. Um, now let's jump over to Mac because there's a, some nuances to both Mac and Windows that I wanted to talk about. All right, you see it's already up. It's not quite as clean as the Linux counterpart. However, it's still pretty good. But you'll notice I am not using the basic terminal in Mac. Uh, the basic terminal in Mac is really ugly. Like, it doesn't matter what you do. So if you've just got terminal and you launch into that, it's okay. I mean, it's not terrible. Um, but I really like iTerm2. It's just a little bit cleaner. Um, it has a, a little bit more of a a lot of the aesthetic that I like, uh, a lot of the more options. So I would suggest using iTerm2, but you can still use regular terminal as well. So this is what regular terminal looks like. Obviously, I've already done everything I did on my Linux box. It's the exact same process because all we're doing is doing a curl, a git, we're installing some fonts, and then just in here, you can actually go into terminal, preferences, and then you're just changing what you need. So on your profiles, you can actually go into find that font, which is right here. And you can see it's the Meslo LGS NF font. But in iTerm2, you can come into preferences. You'll notice iTerm2, you just have a lot more options. You have a multiplexers, you have a lot, uh, just a, a lot more availability to really make the most of your terminal in Mac. So I'm not going to beat a dead horse too much here. I just kind of want to show both of these. But again, let's change our prompt just so we can do a different configuration, much like we did in Linux, so you can see what's going on with it. So we'll flip through this. We're going to go classic on this one, Unicode. Um, let's go with the darkest. And we're going to be a little more concise on this one. Let's go round as well. And we're just going to go round all the way around. And we're going to make it more of a Mac aesthetic. So we're going to go with one line all around. And we're going to go mini icons. So then we'll clear that out. And as you see, as we do just LS or move into like power level 10K, do a git pull, or I'm running into an actual error, probably something I've done on this machine. Knowing me, I probably messed something up. But Needless to say, for this video, I'm just going to leave it all like this. Just a neat way to change your prompt around to make it look cool. So in the Mac one, 
how how much better does this look than the standard terminal from Mac with the standard theming, which just looks archaic and nasty? Now you can actually be in terminal in Mac and be like, check me out. And then finally, we have Windows. Windows is great. We get to Windows Terminal. This is still a new system setup, but uh, we're gonna go ahead, copy, install all the stuff we need to install for this. So we'll just come right into here, go over to christitis.com and type ZSH. Go right into our thing. We're just gonna copy the initial setup. Uh, first off, this is Ubuntu, so we're gonna go apt install ZSH and git just to make sure we have both those packages. And then we'll just simply right click to paste all that in there. And then we'll just do our change shell. And we're gonna go user, and then we'll type our password in. We're gonna go bin ZSH. And then when we exit and we relaunch in, we should now be in a ZSH thing. You'll see, hey, here's what we got going on. So we can go, okay, um, you know what? Let's continue. Uh, with the two to populate the configuration and with it populated through a couple little errors there underneath but that's okay looks more like warnings so let's go ahead and enable this uh, p10k so we're gonna go p10k configure and we did not get it so let's let's take a look at our commands again uh, we're gonna just copy this again and run it and we'll exit relaunch I jumped the gun on that, so there we go. Now it actually launches into the proper configuration. I'll go ahead and leave that in the video just so you can see what not to do. Um, but we'll go ahead, go through our setup once more. We're gonna go rainbow, Unicode, no. And you know what, I like those round things that we did in Mac. Let's make that all round. I like the conciseness of it. So let's compact all that in, mini icons, concise. And we're gonna go ahead and hit yes to this, and then three for verbose, and we'll hit apply. And as you see, we now have the full P10K set up in here. So we can go DIR, make it an awesome prompt or an awesome terminal, something neat. And if you want like this acrylic look, there's a lot of guides out. Um, my basic settings on this is just using the font face, uh, Meslo LGS, like I've talked about, changing use acrylic to true uh, acrylic opacity about 50 percent and then background image opacity to a 50 percent everything else pretty much stock so i just change this no matter what i'm in the cool thing about it is if i go into powershell you still get a lot of the same customization and theming obviously uh, power level 10k only works in linux and that's it. That's what I do in every single system, no matter where I'm at. I really love having Power Level 10K and all the customization it brings. It's completely amazing. If you really want to pimp out your terminal, I don't know a better way to do it than this. Because no matter what system I'm on, I'm always doing it, making my terminal look beautiful. Because it's just so much more pleasant to be in terminal when, with it looking nice. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And as always, thank you to all the Chris Titus members. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.